Welcome to this podcast in a series developed by the Nebraska Juvenile Justice Association. NJJA is a 501c3 not-for-profit public benefit association. The mission of NJJA is to improve services to youth in the juvenile justice system by serving as a resource for collaboration, leadership development, and education for juvenile justice system professionals and interested stakeholders. Our efforts are greatly enhanced with the generous support of the Sherwood Foundation. Please visit our website at njja.org to see a list of upcoming podcasts, as well as the opportunity to revisit those podcasts previously recorded. We welcome your thoughts as to, to potential podcast topics and interest. Welcome to the Juvenile Justice in Nebraska podcast, produced by the Nebraska Juvenile Justice Association. Faith, how are you? I am good. How are you? Doing well. I'm doing well. Um, so before we kick off this episode, we'll kind of introduce Faith, Faith Mills, uh, with the Panhandle Partnership. Um, as usual, I'm Rico Zavala, the host. Uh, we're also joined, joined by Josh Arias, um, who is also a board member, um, and Miss Tammy Sassman. Uh, Tammy, Josh, how are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, real good. Thanks good. for asking. Good to hear. Okay, so the woman of the hour, Miss Faith Mills. Faith, how are you doing? Doing well. I'm doing well. Good to hear. Good to hear. So Faith is out of out of Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Um, I'm in Omaha, so I'm on the totally opposite end of end of the state here. Um, it's a very boring drive, by the way, to drive from Omaha to Scotts Bluff, um, but we do it when we have to. Um, Faith, tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of what you do. I know you represent. You're here representing the Panhandle Partnership. Um, we want to learn a little bit more about what you do, how you do it, what you're doing with with um, youth involved in juvenile justice. Um, I did a little bit of research with the Connected Youth Program, so I'm interested in, in learning all that stuff. Ah, all right. Well, I'm Faith Mills, and I am the Executive Director of the Panhandle Partnership, and we're a membership organization. We've got um, uh, members throughout the, the Panhandle, but then also members throughout the state, which is is great. We work with um, folks like inclusive communities and out in Nebraska and some organizations that can help us here in the Panhandle. We've got a geographic area that I think you can fit two New Jerseys. Oh, wow. Panhandle. So geographically, we're large. Uh, Population-wise, we have more cows than people, so we are <laughs> small. Um, and typically, if I go to a juvenile justice meeting on Monday and a, a substance abuse suicide meeting, prevention meeting on Friday and, you know, throw in a housing meeting on Wednesday, it's the same people wearing different yeah. hats. So we, uh, 25 years ago, we built the Panhandle Partnership to help us collaborate and serve our sparse population in our big area. And now we have a, a culture of collaboration. We work together and juvenile justice is no exception. So I think we mm -hmm. were the first, I think we were the first group to do a multi-county plan for um, our community-based aid dollars. So we really, mm -hmm. sometimes we talk about having 11 counties with one really long main street. Um, sure. We operate often as a, a single um, single entity. And we, so we do that plan all together. We collaborate um, in, in all ways, really. We've got five work groups they're more than a work group but they're they're five um five initiatives older youth system of care birth to eight system of care housing and homelessness suicide and substance abuse prevention and lifespan respite and then um juvenile justice stands on its own a little bit but that also works with our older youth and we so for instance we have one mediation center serves all 11 counties but um, not all county attorneys may know that. Not all all uh, courts may know that. And um, we try and and collaborate and work together so that we can get the word out. We can offer services in in the smallest, uh, more remote counties and uh, smallest population wise. I think we have three counties that hover around a thousand people. That's that's how we're really more frontier than rural. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the way we operate. We we collaborate, we reach out to make sure that even those small counties that are maybe an hour and a half away from Scott's Bluff can still have access to all of the same services. Um, and that would include juvenile justice. So we've got, I think, oh gosh, we have at least six or eight counties 
that um, combine in different ways to offer diversion, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we might have a tiny county that is not going to be able to sustain itself on sure. one or two diversion cases every year because they don't need any more than that. Um, so was, they can go in with the neighboring county. Yeah. I was really excited. I mean, I, I was real excited to get, have you on because I mean, we, we hear so much, and I, I've been a part of the juvenile justice system working um, here in it in Lincoln and somewhat in Omaha. So we have obviously way different ways of doing things than in the panhandle. And that's what I, I really appreciate you talking about is, is it's, it's a different, different way go about doing things. It's a, it's a different uh, a structure we'll say, um, but the end cause is all the same. Um, and, and Faith, did you say that you were with Panhandle Partners for all of the of its existence? No, I, I started my work actually at the state of Nebraska in um, behavioral health. Came out here, did behavioral health at the region for, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Um, but my work was also intricately braided with the partnerships. So I've been involved sure. with the partnership for about 15 years. Wow. And, wow. Uh, have been well, the th going on. Going on I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go too far before I thank you for your leadership um, and and all you do in in Western Nebraska. I mean that's fantastic. We're going to learn more, but I didn't want I didn't want to go too far without make sure that you understand how appreciative we are of what you're doing for the for the youth in in the western part of the state. Well, I owe some thanks to the juvenile justice folks too because back when I worked at the state twenty years ago, that's how I learned to write grants. I reviewed grants for juvenile justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, really taught me a um, taught me a ton. So, yeah. Sure. So let's get into it. Let's get into talk a little bit about how you interact, how um, the Panhandle Partnership, uh, the connected it's connected youth initiative. Is that correct? So that's one of our funding sources that goes into okay. our. But you're right. We need to update our website. It's probably where you got that. Our older youth system of care is the, okay, older, the bigger. Yeah. Older youth system of care. Um, let's learn a little bit more about that because I mean, you know, that's exactly what who's going to be listening to the podcast is juvenile justice um, professionals. Um, so I'd love, you know, specifically people out here and in, in over here in eastern side of the state to know, um, you know, how you're working with with young people. Sure. So we have um, we have a number of organizations that work with young people in one way or another. Uh, our community action. Uh, we have two community action organizations um, that work with youth. Um, we also have a couple, a few actually, mental health and substance abuse providers that work with youth. Uh, Central Plains Center for Services has three PALS workers in the panhandle. And then we've got a multitude, well, I shouldn't say multitude, resources are always scarce, but um, we have a handful of really good uh, youth serving organizations that are working with youth in one way or another. One of them provides a lot of juvenile justice services. I think like a drop in center and, oh, wow. and some things that probation they're partnering with um, probation. So, um, so some good things in that way. And so the older youth system of care comes together to bring everybody to the table. So we can talk about, okay, let's make sure we all know what services are out there and what services are available. Maybe we've got a PALS worker who has has one youth in, in Garden County, which is a little further from Scottsbluff and more sparsely populated. And um, they can collaborate about how can we make sure we can get service to, services to this young person, um, even though they're not, you know, they're not going to come to the drop in center. They don't have a probation or a, uh, pardon me, a um, diversion program. Um, but they need some services. They need some support. There's definitely an investment in and a belief in doing as much as we can on the prevention end before someone intersects with juvenile justice or mm -hmm. we're to get early um, diversion uh, in place. And so, and we have to be creative and innovative because um, we had a detention center for a while. Uh, we closed that detention center. There's talks about uh, that need again but as of right now we don't have a detention center so if we do have a young person who um is going to be going into detention we're sending them to omaha or we're sending them we're sending them across the state which means they're far away from any supports that they do have here mm -hmm. locally and it also means we've got two officers they're driving to omaha like you mentioned the uh long drive yeah. <laughs> to Omaha and back from Omaha. Um, 
And then they, you know, it's it's not an ideal situation. So we really want to do everything we can to keep our young people here, to get them the services and supports they need to um, to help and keep them um, from from needing detention. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we uh, we partner with folks throughout the state, but we we try and do everything that we can. Um, in a, in a in an innovative way to serve our kids. Do you find yeah, well, that there's do you find that there's services in other states close to you? But of course, yeah. the jurisdictions in Nebraska, so you got to keep it in Nebraska. But yet, it's so, it's so far away. Yeah, both both distance and just kind of culture wise, yeah. we're closer to and and um, and go to Rapid City, South Dakota. Cheyenne, Wyoming, and, and Denver, Colorado, and the, the whole Front Range, um, much more often than we go to Lincoln and Omaha. Lincoln and Omaha is probably like what six, eight hours. Yeah, and Denver's three. Um, if you live in the Northern Panhandle, Rapid City is an hour and a half. So mm-hmm. we identify with them. Number one, we that's where our population um, moves to and from. Um, but yeah, depending on what the service is and depending on what the needs are, that's just either not a possibility or really difficult. So, you know, substance abuse services, for instance, uh, we do, there are some treatment centers that we um, might have access to, but maybe there's a Medicaid issue or maybe like you said, there's a jurisdiction issue. So yeah, it's a challenge. It's yeah. definitely a challenge. I can definitely see that. I, I like, you know, how you spoke about prevention side of things, because I don't care if you're on the western side of Nebraska, eastern side of Nebraska or central Nebraska. Prevention is something that we've, we've got to continue to grow and, and continue to, to get better at. Um, you know, ultimately, we, none of us want to see our kids end up in detention centers. Um, you know, yes, do they serve a purpose? Absolutely. And they're fantastic. But the best case scenario is keep them close to home, as you mentioned, keep them close to home with family, with their support systems. Um, is there much work being done within the western side of Nebraska, Scotts Bluff area, Gearing and, and North Platte with detention alternatives? Um, are there any, do you guys have any, any programs that currently exist that work within uh, the d- detention alternative realm? Yeah, you know, sometimes um, my philosophy is surround yourself with people that are smarter than you are. Yeah, sure. So sometimes I'm just the hub of the wheel and I'll say, yeah, you, bet. Uh, you know, uh, our uh, our chief probation officer Darren Duncan is going to know more about some of those than I yeah, am. Um, but but I do know that they are all all of their uh, their juvenile probation officers and DHH DHH case management case managers are um, working together. And if there's a behavioral health need, the region's involved as well. So we do have some multidisciplinary teams mm-hmm. that um, we wouldn't be a part of because we are not necessarily offering services to the young person so we don't need to know um all the details but they're working together to make sure that um services are graded and that they're communicating with one another so i know that that's going on um let's see we are we do we are building up a few more diversion services i think there was one that covers a couple of different counties um so always looking at that and really partnering with the schools as well mm-hmm. to see, you know, if we can have um, some of our juvenile justice scholars pay for a, uh, I'm not sure if it's a social worker or a psychologist in the school, in one of our bigger schools, um, or are they partnering with our educational service unit to make sure we've got all the supports that we can offer uh, behaviorally for young people that are in the school. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of collaboration going on. I don't know, um, I don't know more specifics than that, but. No, that's great. They're all collaborating. Yeah. Um, is your is your connection with probation, is that, is that pretty consistent? Um, do, you, do you communicate with them often? Yeah, we we do. We're not doing um, case management right. necessarily service, so we wouldn't have as much need. But so the partnership does a lot more system building and big picture collaboration work. And um, yeah, probate. I, I always know probation is just a phone call away. We've got a good relationship with them. That's great. Yeah. That's great. What, well, Tammy? You got anything else? 
No, I don't think so. Um, Faith, were you ever in the Southeast area here? I was, yes. Yes, let's see. I I grew up in Colorado, but I I, uh, went to UNL and I lived in Lincoln for about 15 years. So what has been your personal experience in regards to as far as kind of those resources, the culture that you've noticed from kind of the, what I would say, kind of the urban areas versus the rural areas? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there, I grew up in rural Colorado, so I'm very familiar with the rural. There's just not as much. There's not as many resources. We don't have the luxury of duplicating. Not that you know Lincoln mm-hmm. and uh, Southeast Nebraska wants to duplicate, but we just don't have the the people or the money to duplicate. So we've got to, you know, work smarter, not harder, and and figure out a way to. Uh, to braid all of our resources. That's one thing. Um, I think there's there's just a Lincoln and Omaha to me feel like the Midwest. And I feel like Scottsdale and the Panhandle feels like the West, just because we identify with some of the, the other states. Um, so there's just a the culture, lots of Broncos fans out here rather than oh, Kansas boy. City, maybe. I know. <laughs> you can you can take that out if you want to. But that it's just it's <laughs> it's the way lots of our kids go to uh Colorado and and um Wyoming and South Dakota schools. Um it, we're just in a different culture. Mm-hmm. Um we we make the trip, we make the trip out there quite a bit though. So uh we we stay connected and and um work with our folks in the east too and if you're ever interested the landscape's actually pretty beautiful out here yeah so come and come and drive through and we'll we're happy to host um when I've, actually, I've, I've, I've been able to hike the bluff a few times oh good and very good yes and i played i played a lot of golf at monument golf course yes so pretty, I think pretty familiar the, with the area good i think we're the best kept secret We've got some, some good things going on and some, uh, yeah, we just have to, we have to think differently. We have to think in a system way and, um, and, and serve our kids the best way we can. Yeah. One of the things I think, I hope that people listen to this, this podcast and, and if they're working with young people that are, that are maybe their family's moving to your area, um, you know, make sure that you reach out to faith and, and say, Hey, you know, we have a family that's going to be coming your way. Um, they're going to be needing services, um, X, Y, and Z. You know, can you point us in the right direction? Um, you know, I think that's something that is just as important as as hearing about what you're doing, but getting that exposure out there for you. Also, when people, we have people go, traveling to that side of the state, um, that those resources, there's no lag in services. Exactly. And if they've got some case management going on, maybe we can help um, have a seamless transition to exactly to new PALS workers or new, you know, probation probably does that um, as well. Transition to new probation officers or or DHHS workers. Yeah, we, we really want to do that. There's a resource guide on our website. It can be helpful, too, if maybe a family is looking for needs a little bit of help with basic needs while they're making the transition to a new area or they want to find out, you know, where can we get um, this or that service? So just go to panhandlepartnership.com and there's a Western Nebraska resource guide right there on the front page. Um, That's panhandlepartners.com. Panhandle? Nope, panhandlepartnership.com. That's it. Panhandlepartnership.com. But always... Don't hesitate to uh, just give me a call as well, and we can uh, we can help facilitate some some uh, collaboration. Um, Faith, what is what? If you don't mind me asking, if you don't mind sharing, what is your office phone number? That way, we can get that out there as well. Yeah, you bet. So, our I just <laughs> I never call ourself myself at the office. I get it. And, uh, so um, I have to look it up. Uh, we, our office number is six, sorry, 308-633-3818. And you can also always call me on my um, cell phone, which is 308-262-5940. So if you don't you reach us on our, <laughs> if you don't reach us on our landline, I'd rather you call me on my my cell phone um, than, uh, than not reach us. So yeah, sure. reach out. 
I know I reached out to Faith about um, being a part of our conference. And so she said, shared that maybe next year they'll be able to have some of the manpower to be able to possibly have a booth. So uh, for those Good. of you who attend our NJJ conference, you know, look for Faith hopefully next year as far as one of the exhibitors possibly. Yeah. Faith, have, have you? Go ahead, Faith. We love, Go ahead, we love the conference. I've attended with my behavioral health hat um, a number of times and it's top notch. So. And that, that was my question was going to be, was, have you ever been to the conference? Um, yes. You know. In fact, I think we presented a couple of times, once on um, an initiative with behavioral health and the ESU and Shattered State College and one of our providers um, on the AWARE grant and and how we have uh, worked on that grant. So, so yes, very aware and, and appreciative. We enjoy the conference. We send a lot of folks from the Panhandle. Good, good. And Faith, uh, one one thing that Tammy has done a fantastic job of um, in her short time at NJJA is her one of her biggest goals is to provide awareness, provide um, you know, just getting people to understand that what's going on in Western Nebraska. Um, so if you have, if you know of anybody else um, that is doing great work. Um, that would want the opportunity to to partner with with the Juvenile Justice Association, by all means, please let Tammy know. Appoint them in Tammy's directions because rural Nebraska is 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 big on Tammy's list right now, which I thankfully, you know, she's she's focusing on that. Um, so by all means, please point them in Tammy's direction. Will do. Yeah. One yeah. similar common item we we found out we have is Jana, Jana Shake, who yes. is yes. Our board member and um, Faith has done some work with Jaina, who's been fantastic to have as a board member for us. Yeah, she's wonderful. Our careers have sort of just just uh, interconnected over twenty years, so I think she's I think she's wonderful. Yeah, we've it's found great. a mutual fan club. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Josh, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to share. Uh, Tammy, I'm going to be going to the. Multicultural Youth Leadership Conference in Scotts Bluff in September. Um, yes. uh, we're working with Empowering Families. I don't know if you know them. I do. I'm on their board of directors. Oh, wow. wow. Wonderful nice. organization. Wonderful yes. conference. Oh, Tammy, have you had any anything you want me to take over there, some materials or something, or just to just to share a little bit about what we do. I'd, I'd love to take that over there for that conference. I'm going to be doing like a little workshop about art and how to, um, you know, engage youth and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's a that's little something. wonderful. We'll have to meet in person when you're out here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, I've met you somewhere before probably at the NJJA conference, but. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I know this 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 um, podcast is, is about the Panhandle Partnership, um, but we do have Josh on as well. It, Josh is a new board member, um, newish. Did we have a podcast with Josh, Tammy? I don't remember. They've all kind of intermingled in my head. We have not yet had a podcast, but it's in the makings yet. Oh, okay. Then I'm not going to spoil it. Then I am not going to spoil it. I, leave it up to me to spoil something. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up um, empowering families. They work with uh, they work with all youth, uh, but especially they work with our um, youth who come with, from immigrant families, our Latino and Latinx and um, and Native population, and they do a fantastic job. They brought in I should yeah partnership was a small part of it, but they brought in uh, Dolores Huerta a few years ago, which I thought was just the most amazing thing. And uh, and if you don't know about Dolores Huerta, uh, look her up because she, she's amazing. And um, they do a wonderful job of putting people in front of youth who have made a tremendous difference. Um, people that, uh, that, that it's, they're just wonderful. So, yeah, check out the Multicultural Youth Leadership yep. um, Conference. Yeah. I was there. Last year. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I mean, I'm, I'll just be honest. I've never heard of it, and and oh. that's that. In as long as I had been in 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 working with kids, it's kind of it's sad that that I you know I was in that world for 17 years, and I've ne have never heard of that conference. And more people need to know about this these things because yeah. Western Nebraska does great work. And oh. and you know, if we don't hear about it, we can't attend, or we you know we can't pass on the information. Um, so that's, those are things that we'd love to put on our website. Um, 
I'm sure you can get that information, to Tammy, and and maybe it already is, Tammy. I haven't checked on it, um, but yeah. we'd love to- I'll talk it over with them. They, um, it's. I think it's always been they offer it to the schools in the pain handle, but maybe they should offer it a little bit wider. We bring in folks um, from the east as speakers and and so forth. But um, I will share that with them. Yeah, and Abel, did you see you were there last year? I think I heard. I was yeah. I couldn't be there last year, but I heard really great things about the art projects. Oh, nice and yeah, yeah. They're, 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 their keynote for the high school, Ju- Julissa. Yes. She was an author. Really good stuff. So yes, yeah, she has a good book. Um, there is. Uh, I want to touch if, if we have time real quickly too. The partnership ha- uh, sponsors a training academy, so um, we bring in trainings, and that could be anything from you know we'll help our local organizations put on a small training for their staff, but we've also hosted some. Um, We hosted the co-author of the Adverse Childhood Experiences Mm. uh, study and um, Dr. Folletti, which was was fantastic. I think we had 300 people there. We did a a human trafficking symposium, um, same same number of people. And we would rather bring top-notch speakers, educators to the panhandle and reach 300 people than spend the about the same amount of money and send four or five to a national conference. Yeah. So that's sort of our mission. And um, certainly we've done a lot with, with youth work and training people who work with youth um, through the training Academy too. So if there are things that either you're doing in the East or you know of that you think would be uh, able to be replicated in the West and, and get more people than, you know, us sending a, a couple carloads to Lincoln or Omaha, we can help, um, we can help you do that. So we're always interested in doing that. That's great to hear. Most definitely I'll keep that in mind. Faith, I don't think this is the last you're going to hear from Tammy. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> um, I think um, we're just starting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Faith, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it was great to meet you. It was great to hear about what the great things that you're doing in Western Nebraska. Um, you know, there is life outside of, of, Grand Island. I mean, people are out there. They're making a difference, and that's exactly what we wanted to hear about. And I'm glad we did. So, uh, Faith, great. thanks for joining us, and and um, you know, keep keep up the good fight. Thank you all so so very much. Thank you, Faith. All it was right. very nice to meet you and hear about the wonderful things you're doing out there. Yeah, I'm, and I might see you uh, out there in September. Yeah, let's plan on it. <laughs> that would be. And if you want to, just you know, here we go in the car and. Bring them along. There you go. <laughs> go hiking while you guys are at the conference. <laughs> That's right. I, I'm probably going to choose golfing over hiking. I mean, <laughs> if Josh wants to go hike, he can hike. And they're right next to each other. I'll golf. They are. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I do got to run. I got to head out. Um,